Good evening. The theme for our Bible study is Kingdom Citizens Striving to Advance the Kingdom of God on Earth as it is in Heaven. In this June emphasis, it is empowering men to advance the kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, now, Lord, we come before you, praying, Heavenly Father, that you will hide me, Heavenly Father, that your word will be expressed as you adorned it. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. The thought, kingdom men must know that they have an obligation to work against inequality and unfairness in the challenging world. They must teach the young boys to grow into godly men, respecting themselves and shining spiritual lights in a dark world. We have four words that are emphasized in this lesson. They are pray, teach, stand, and equality. And I will try to break them down. Pray. Prayer is the means by which we receive God's supernatural help that flows to us through his ordained grace. Teach. God relates that he has created a spiritual truth, health, and light. And he also created an opposing un spirit of untruth and darkness. You can only obtain the spirit of truth and light through him. Stand. To me, that means to remain upright in a moral sense pertaining to the spirit of God. Equality. This is the belief that all people are equal before God and that they all have equal opportunity and equal responsibility to use their gifts to obey their calling to the glory of God. Now, we have three questions. How often do you require your sons to go to church with you? This should be mandated in regularity for they should be your shadow in your spiritual growth. Have you ever taken the time to pray with your son about life's goals? Yes. And this is something that's needed to be quoted over and over to them when they rise while they're going through the day and before they retire, that it might be persistent in their minds and their thoughts. This we don't all do, but this is something that should be mandated from each father. How important is it to pray out loud so your sons can hear you praying for them? This is also important to include them in the worship, to include them in the thoughts that you have for them and that you are praying for them. As we go into our introduction, it says the heart of the lesson, kingdom fathers must ensure the future growth of the kingdom by lifting their sons to God in prayer. And then it goes on to say in the thought that kingdom men uh, should actually uh, talk to their sons and often 
the idea of praying for and with our sons and grandsons is talked about and reality seldom actually practice. We know that what we should be doing, but we don't actually do it. And as a matter of retroactive transparency, I don't mind using myself to tell you where God has brought me from. I had legal custody of my son since he was nine months old. When he was four years old, I joined the Air Force and I left him with my mom and my sister and was confident that he was fully, he was in a loving Christian home and ingrained in church. I had a monthly stipend going to my mom and was confident that he had every opportunity for food, shelter, education, and Christian growth. I was not there for him to hear me pray for and with him or to set the example before him. He had to make his own decision about God and his relationship with him. Today, he is in a nursing home, brain damaged from drug abuse. Fathers, build the foundation for the future of your son by living a fully dedicated life to God's kingdom. Fathers, teach your son. Fathers, lead your son by example. Fathers, let your son hear you pray for him so he will know God's plan for his life, so he will keep these desires and thoughts in his heart forever. Fathers, introduce God to your son as the father of all fathers who loves all and has given all to whom all belongs. As we go further, our scripture today is from First Chronicles 29, 18 through 20. And it reads, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments thy testimonies and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation bless the Lord God of their fathers, and lowered their heads, and worship the Lord and the king. Now, to get a better context of our scripture, if we go back to the verses before, David had just talked about the foundation that he had laid for the people, for all the provisions that he had made for the palace. And fathers, in order for us to build a foundation for our sons. We must work solidly on our own foundation, dedicating our lives and reintroducing the Father as the one that he truly is. 
Now, and then it goes on in section two, kingdom fathers know that they must pray that their sons embrace the healthy spiritual goals and develop a style for achieving them. We have several different types of temples that our sons can build. And these temples are built daily in the lives of our people. Daily as we deal with the social warfare, as we deal with home, community, and education. These temples are continuously built in the kingdom of God, sending up timber that we might sufficiently build the temples that we have at hand. Kingdom citizens know that openly praying for their sons sets a powerful example for their sons to follow. And David said to the whole assembly, praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord God after their fathers. Hearing David praying with and for his son set a powerful message that greatly encouraged those in the assembly. Kingdom men, have your children, especially your sons, ever heard you pray out loud for them. In summary, I would like to say, a flower planted and left on its own in a desert place will not flourish without nurtured care. It needs proper potting soil, water, fertilizer, topsoil, plant food, and possibly even pruning. Two of the same flowers will bloom and cross-pollinate and often drop seeds for future plants. As fathers, we must also nurture our sons. We must lead, teach, and set the example for their lives. A child diligently seeks an example to mimic, to develop survival instincts. This includes behavioral and speech patterns. It is not enough to raise a son in a godly home with food, clothing, and protection. It is not enough to drag him to church and ensure that he serve in ministry until he's grown. This does not make him a kingdom citizen or impact future generations. This only develops an obedient son in your eyesight. How many of you never drank alcohol, smoked, or cursed in your father's presence, but were totally different among your peers? A father must live the life he teaches his son, pray with him, and for him in his presence. Some preacher's kids are the first to drop the church image because they see the real men at church and the fake man at, I mean, the real man at home and the fake man at church. True godly fathers live and teach by example and build godly foundations for future generations. The life of a son will be enhanced by and exemplified by the life instilled in him by his father. And he will be able to make wise decisions about God and his relationship with him. As kingdom citizens, each of our sons should all be temple builders for our kingdom with a mind to work for the kingdom and not the things of the world. This then calls for a spiritual lifting above carnality and the strongholds of life. This brings to mind the ancient 
ritual of lifting a newborn child to the heavens and reciting the words, Behold, the only thing greater than yourself. Fathers, lift your sons to the only one greater than themselves. Lift your sons to the father of all fathers. Lift your sons to the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lift your sons to the grand architect of the universe, Alpha and Omega, and our sovereign king in praise and supplication that might praise the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the only things greater than themselves, whose power, grace, and mercy endures all generations, and that they and future generations keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of their people forever. Fathers, lift your sons with the spirit of Nehemiah, who had a mind to work and refused to come down from the wall. Fathers, lift your sons with a diligence, shunning the entanglements and temptations of the flesh. Fathers, Lift your sons above social warfare and systemic racism by reciting to them Psalm 25, 16 through 8. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my afflictions and my distress and take away my sins. Fathers, lift your sons above racial profiling and police brutality in the words of Psalm 18, 1 through 3. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies. Fathers, lift your sons by allowing them to hear you praying out loud for them and lifting them to the one greater than themselves. Fathers, lift your sons. Amen.